DigiKey and Adafruit present. Hi, on MPI. On MPI is worth electronic lady to this what, week what do they do what do they make all right this week we're covering an npi from worth electronic we've covered their stuff before this is their second time around i always love that and we get to cover different uh products from electronic companies um so this week we're going to cover this is kind of new i didn't even know that worth made uh opt electronics this is a vixel what's a vixel it sounds like pixel but it's not this is a vertical cavity surface laser that's right it's a laser. Laser. Uh, you can have a laser on your circuit board uh, quite easily. You don't have to deal with tubes or high voltage transformers or any of that nonsense. So uh, what's a Vixel? Um, so, you know, I, like I, we, we call it a Vixel. That's apparently how it's pronounced. It's a vertical cavity surface laser. Vertical. That's because um, it emits uh, the laser out vertically through the top of the um, device. Cavity, cavity, it's not like a tooth thing. It's actually like how it uh, generates the uh, coherent light. Surface, you know, it's on the surface of, comes off the surface of the device. And it's a laser. Um, this is a 3.5 millimeter by 3.5 millimeter Vixel. And you can see here, it's kind of taken apart. I got this from a presentation. There's a ceramic substrate on top of it is the, um, the contacts, the uh, Vixel element. Uh, it's bonded onto the ceramic surface. There's a housing element, and then there's like a diffuse silica glass on top. And um, this has a two watt, 940 nanometer um, emission laser output, except it's like, you know, normally you don't think of lasers as made out of sol um, solid state, but yeah, I mean, if you look at time of flight sensors and stuff, they're using uh, Vixels as well. Um, so this is, I, I got this from Wikipedia. This is kind of cool. They show like how it's actually built. Um, and they have like little thin layers of that end substrate. And that's what they use to, um, you know, basically create the, the cavity that emits the coherent light out of the top of the Vixel. Um, what do I mean by coherent light? What I mean is the light that comes out of it is really 940 nanometers. And you can see this is the distribution of light um, that comes out by intensity. And you can see it's very, very sharp and pointed. Um, it's really 940 and it's like not on the dot, right? It isn't like plus or minus 10, plus or minus 20. It doesn't have like a, a bell curve look to it. It's a very fine point. Um, and not only that, but all the wavelengths that come out are coming out at the same phase as well. So compare that with your favorite infrared uh, emitter before this Vixel, which was, you know, the infrared LED. Uh, these come in surface mount through whole, you know, large scale. You can get two watt higher emitters. Um, but if you compare the output, you see like the wavelength, this is a particularly low cost IR uh, emitter. We use this for like a TV gone projects. But you see on the left, the wavelength, um, it's 940, right? That's the middle, but it's like, it kind of smears out to like 900 up to, you know, almost a thousand nanometers. So it's, it's very wide band comparatively to um, the Vixel. And on the right, you can see the ambient temperature also affects the wavelength. So it's, it's like, it's good enough for an IR remote, and these things are a couple pennies a piece. But if you need coherent light, you need light that is you know, the exact wavelength and the exact phase all at the same time, and IR LED is just not going to cut it. So what are these used for? Um, they're often used for time of flight or, or basically LiDAR uh, devices. Um, so if you have an Apple phone, the Face ID system uses a uh, Vixel um, to light up your face. And then, you know, I, you read the patent, but it like looks at the, the response and it makes a map of your face. If you looked at um, the Xbox Connect, it also used uh, Vixel technology to... Now, in this chart, are these the standard things, distance, speed of light, time, divided by two? Are these, are these what these stand for? Yeah, because it's actually measuring how long it takes for light to bounce off of the point. And so we have time of flight sensors that we've covered before. Um, this is how LiDAR works. It act literally bounces light and it has to be coherent because it actually measures the fate you know you can't have a jumble of light it has to be coherent so when it comes back you can measure how long it took and the phase difference of that light um and the, you can do the math we're talking about like picoseconds here so you have to have a very good driver yeah. and that's one of the things that you light moves fast light moves as fast as light so you do need to have a driver like you can't just like turn this on and like boom you've got data coming out of it you need to have that precise timing circuitry and there's other companies that sell um the Vixel drivers. You just Google for Vixel driver and you can check it out there. There's various companies that sell them that will drive the Vixel that you've got here 
and then measure the light back. But there could be other use cases for it. This is just the raw emitter. There could be all sorts of uses for it. Um, it is infrared, so of course it's not visible to you know human eye. So um, you know, worth you know, in their presentation, they're like, look, you know, yes, lidar in time of flight, uh, biometric and three D recognition, um, robotics, home automation stuff. I mean, like, basically these things used to be crazy expensive, and now they're like ten bucks, um, and you can just pick and place them on. So this is like pretty sweet if you have a use case where you need infrared light and you could greatly benefit by having it be coherent um, and by having it be very uh, precise wavelength, a VIX will do the job much, much, much better than an IRLED. Don't fight with an IRLED. It's not worth the time. This does the job much better. Um, so there's two versions of this. There's the A and B, uh, just to be aware. Both of them have the basically the same specs, but one has a viewing axis of 60 by 45 and the other is 110 by 85. So it's a wider or narrower band range. Um, it's pretty neat. It's like cool that you can just buy a laser semiconductor. You do have to heat sink it. I soldered up one to some wires and, and you know you can you can see the light come out of it. I'll say that ironically, it was I thought, you know, usually you can put an uh, uh, IR LED um, under a camera and it will show up, but because this is so narrow band it actually doesn't leak into the visible range enough. Oh, that's cool. so it's like i could i could it's show it precise. off but it's yeah it doesn't actually look as i thought like oh, it'd be like a really bright point of light but actually you don't really see it because yeah. it's doing a very good job of not you know that makes sense bleeding into into you, you don't want to waste all those photons right because usually because you saw this usually there's a wider spread um so that said uh check it out this is the b1 again there's also the the a version of uh, the same uh, sensor, um, and you can just it, it, the both part names are like really long. So just search for Worth VCSL, and you'll you'll find them um, on digikey.com, and you can purchase them. And and they're just it's just a, a diode. You solder it on. You power it uh, with a constant current uh, power source um, because it is you know 1.5 volts to what two volts, and it can draw up to an amp or more. So you definitely need like a good power supply and a good heat sink. Uh, but, like, this is a super cheap off-the-shelf way to get, you know, LiDAR-quality sensors into your design. Could be cool. And that's this week's INMPI. I on MPI.